Now, Mary McBride Walsh, two famous people behind you there, in Irish terms, or international terms, actually. The man in the painting? The man in the painting is Sean McBride. And the, man in the, the, and the lady in the picture? And the lady is his mother, Maud Gunn. Gunn, Maud Gunn. So, Sean McBride was born in? Born in Paris in 1904. He's yeah. the only son of Major John and Maud Gunn. And uh, did he ever come back to Westport to live? No, he never came to Westport to live. He lived between Paris and Dublin. And Dublin, yeah. Mm. Did you know in him well? Clare Island. Very well. Very well. Yeah, he holidayed here regularly and we spent a lot of time with him in Dublin. And he's godfather to our daughter, Una. And uh, do you know much about his early life? His early life, sure, he was on the run in politics and he qualified as a barrister at a very young age. And where did he I go to school? They, he went to school in Paris and then he went to Mount St. Benedict in Gorey. In Gorey? Uh, he was 12 before he spoke English. He learned English from Yeats, actually, and Ezra Pound. They taught him English. So he always had a little French tang to his. Yeah, the broken. Br mm. Broken, yeah. The French yeah. was his first language. Mm. And how did he get Because of the separation, you see, between his father and his mother, his um, mother kept him in Paris, so as he wouldn't be get back to Ireland in case the Major might kidnap him. And did he see much of his father in his lifetime? No. He was in boarding school at the age of 12 mm -hmm. when his father was executed in 1916 and he recalled the priest coming in to tell him that his dad was executed. But he admired his father mm -hmm. tremendously. And did he feel traumatised? Did he ever talk about that? Did he ever no. He never felt sad? Talk or about didn't talk about it? Yeah? No. But well, he did keep in great contact with my grandmother Eileen, who was his, his mother's half-sister. And he always visited her and went to stay. He never carried um, the burden of the marital breakup at all. Mm. He had a great, strong connection with the family in Westport. He stayed with us all my childhood life when he'd come home from abroad. Like, he was an awful lot of his life abroad in Geneva. When he was secretary, when he was then he was a New York secretary, assistant secretary general of the United Nations. Then he was in uh, Geneva for uh, the International Peace Bureau, and then he went out to Namibia for years. And he and studied he, law, did he? He studied law, yeah. And where did he do that? In King's Inns in Dublin. In Dublin, yeah. I, I don't think uh, um, anybody to date has qualified as a barrister in the short time he did. He, he's also the uh, only world recipient of both the Nobel Prize, the Lenin Peace Prize, and he's the only non-American to receive the gold medal for peace and justice. He got 10 honorary doctorates from around the world. If you look over there, you'll see the, the, the big list, yeah. CV. And did he ever practice law in Ireland? Oh, he did, yeah. He did a lot of famous cases. Sure, he did the Westport case. Do you remember the Trimboli? Mm, Mr. Trimboli, yeah. yeah. And was and he with he the, did the, the, the Fallon. You remember the famous guard, the Fallon, who was shot uh, down at the Keys in Dublin? I was, you know, too young at the time, but I'd still hear an odd one on the news. Mm. And he became a politician? Yeah, he formed the inter party government in 1947 48. And what party? Public, he was clan of public, though. Mm. And what other parties went in with them? Oh, sure the, the clan of Talon, was there one of them? Um, yeah, Fianna Fall mm. went in with them. Was he a minister? He was a minister for external affairs in 1948. And uh, he was involved in forestry, was he? Was he and then, he, yeah, he set up a forest station. And was he a minister for agriculture at that time, or was he... No, he... He just, just came up with the idea. He just came up with the idea. Which was a great idea. He has written um, a book called um, A Lesson to the Irish People. Hmm. It's, a, it's very good. It's all about a forest station and went back to our natural resources mm. and that. Was well, he involved with the United Nations as well, was he? He was Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations, yeah. He, be, he was based in New York then. He, he founded Amnesty International. He was Chairman of the International Peace Bureau and the inter President of the Red Cross. And were there others with him in, uh, with Amnesty or did he was he the main man in it? Oh, there were, if it, four, there were four signatories. I can only remember himself and a guy called, um, I think it was Dan White. And how did you, how do you remember him as? Oh sure, we loved him in our mm. house and we loved his visits and, oh I remember him so well, sure. 
I was just heartbroken when he passed away. Mm. It was like another... Was he, a, was he serious, man? Well, people would say he was serious, but he had a wonderful sense of humour. And... Uh, he re oh, sure, he rock with laughter. Wonderful sense of humour. And would he so socialise down here now? Would he go to the pub or anything like that? Or no, not Was he a private man? Was he a private man, was he? No, he loved meeting people. Mm. Sure, you were out with us for a meal oh, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Clear out in Clear Eye. Yeah. Sure, we had a wonderful trip in Clear Eye in '83 when he switched on the light. And um, he, you remember. And the he water. Wrote, and the water. And you remember he made the amazing speech, it hit all the headlines the next day. Um, the Irish Times had a photograph of him where he rolled up his sleeves and attacked the politicians. John Healy was there from Clare Morris or Castle Charlestown. Where are you got a few interesting photographs? Yes, um, this one is Major John on his wedding day. On his wedding day, yeah. Okay. Uh, Sean gave me that, his son. And this is um, Sean and myself at the unveiling. Sean was in Sligo unveiling a, a, seven, a, nine, a 1798 monument. He was rededicating it. His mother had unveiled it back in the... In you know, Sligo Town, yeah. Sligo Town, yeah. Okay. That was during the Yates Summer School. Mm -hmm. Jim. And this one is uh, Sean here in our house uh, with uh, Seamus, Eric in Seamus's arms and Bernadine and Una's little tots. The family, yeah. Yeah. Family, family album. Yeah, many moons mm -hmm. ago. Right, here's another. And this then is um, Maud Gon's half-sister Eileen, my granny. So that's your granny, yeah? That was my granny. Okay. Um, and where does she live? She lived in Mallow Cottage. And this is me as a baby, and that's my mother, Bernadine. And who took over Mallow Cottage after the... Uh, she went back to Lord Sligo Lord again. Sligo. Mm. Do you know what it was built for initially? You don't, know huh? Mallow Cottage. I don't, no. Mm. And then this is uh, my dad, Irk McBride, with his twin sisters, Clora and Kleena. Okay. They're all gone now, yeah? Uh, they're all gone, yeah. Mm. Well, my dad was born in 1907, and the twins, Clora and Kleena, were born in uh, 1905. Mm. Well, your father had a business on Bridge Street? Uh, my mother had a business on Bridge business. Street. My father had the family farm. This is Sean. And mm. that's Sean when he was a uh, Minister for External Affairs. In the government? Yeah. Way back in the 40s and 50s. Okay. So that's the biographical notes on Sean. That's a long list. It's a long list, yeah.